Okay, we're back. Welcome back. Live in San Francisco, this is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by my co-host Jeff Frick, general manager of the Cube, replacing for Dave Vellante, who could not make it for this trip. Uh, Jeff, excited to have our next guest, uh, Paul Duffy from Amazon Web Services Workspaces. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you, Goody. So we'd like to jump in and extract some signal out of your head and share that data with the folks. Uh, workspaces we covered pretty extensively at reInvent. Uh, very well received. Uh, again, <laughs> Amazon, we use football analogies. Moving the ball inch by inch down the field, you know, it just seems to be just nonstop stuff coming out of Amazon. So, so let's get the update first. Since reInvent, what's the update on Workspace? Share it with the folks. What, what new traction you have, any new features, what you're announcing here, real quick update. Sure, so we're really happy to have, um, with the momentum we've had since reInvent. So we announced Workspace as a, a limited preview of reInvent. Andy mentioned this morning in his speech we had over 10,000 people who signed up for the limited preview. And then um, earlier this morning we made Workspaces available to all customers. So anybody can go and sign up for it in the, in the AWS console and start using it now. Provision however many number of Workspaces they want. They can integrate with their Active Directory, so the users can keep using the credentials that they use and can connect with a, a choice of devices, whether it's an iPad, Android tablet, or Kindle, or PC, or, or Mac um, laptop, desktop. And 10,000 people on the uh, on the limited release. That's the number of requests, yeah, that's the number of people who signed up for that. We so, were really pleased with that. So how much, how, how close were you in the product that, that went out in GA that you released at reInvent compared to what is there today based on the feedback from the 10,000 users? Well, we definitely learned a lot more about how different customers were going to use the service. So we, we got a whole range of different feedback from a whole range of different industries, whether it was people who were looking to use it in a, in a retail context, people who were used to using it in a, a more traditional context, kind of a new, we heard from different customers about how they have kind of diverse sets of users. So some have this kind of seasonal thing that they need to provision a bunch of desktops for a relatively short period of time and shrink them down. So it's the same kind of capabilities that we talked about when we announced it at reInvent, but bringing those things to, to make them available to all customers right now instead of just those who were in the limited preview. So you, you touched on it a little bit, but so are there some use cases where this thing just really knocks it out of the park versus just getting um, you know, Windows, Windows Live? Well, I think we office live, excuse me. Well, I think for I mean for us, we thought I mean virtual desktops themselves are not necessarily a, a new thing. And when um, when Andy talked about it when he introduced the service at reInvent, it was we kind of characterised it around the virtual desktop dream. But this thing has been around. The sunray. I keep going back for, to the sunray <laughs> for for a long time. But it's like it was always difficult. Customers had to buy all this hardware and then provision it. And then once they got to capacity, they'd have to buy more hardware, and more software, and do, do more provisioning. So. We heard from you know, lots of large companies, both large and small, who just like the idea of an easy way that you know, they can provision a desktop with software that's integrated with their existing infrastructure, that they can manage with their existing tools with a few clicks of a mouse. But then these kind of the use cases where potentially you've got workforces where they're distributed, so they might be a lot of people who are actually working at home, so they wouldn't necessarily have the corporate issued device with an asset sticker on, and this gives um, IT, the ability to give them a desktop, has all the familiar applications that they're using, it kind of has the corporate image, but they can still know that they can control that their, their data isn't going to be stored on end user devices. So Paul, I just shared a link from uh, Jeff Barr's uh, blog post about the availability of workspaces, uh, with some commentary on our crowd chat here, uh, I want to share with you and get your comments on. One, uh, uh, Shane Gibson says, AWS workspaces are available, registered, and bang, 20 minutes later I have my desktop in the cloud. Woo, he's always happy. So don't comment <laughs> yet. So the next one is um, from Oliver Gessier. Uh, Amazon Web Services workspace is generally available, but sadly still not in the EU West. Yes. Yeah, so, so comment on, obviously they're happy customers. People, boom, you're bang, you're in the cloud, boom, bang, whatever they use. 20 minutes you're up and running with the cloud, that's nice but availability, talk about what's happening. So today we, we made, well, earlier this morning, we made workspaces available to all customers. Initially, it's in two regions. One of those is um, US West 2, which is our region in um, Oregon. The other region is US East 1, which is our region in Northern Virginia. And as we said in the um, announcement communications we sent out, we will be expanding to other regions very soon, as soon as we can do that. So it's rolling, rolling out as available. You're going yeah, to as soon as turning them on. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so it's not like, 
they're being blocked out. Just that's the migration plan. Yeah, that's the, the turn on plan. Initial plan is in those two regions, okay. and like, like we said, soon for other regions. Okay, so it's not 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 that's not news. It's just basically that's just the way it is. Right. Absolutely. We want zero to everything right now. The, the <laughs> expectations that you've set are tremendous. Yeah. And, we've, and we've been, that was one of the things in the limited preview. I mean, we've been very pleased with customers from all all countries that you could think of who are So, obviously, the other commentary we've had earlier on was uh, a tweet that I saw and retweeted was uh, Amazon's new model, price drops as a service. <laughs> all right, just continue price drops. So, is there any price drops in work, workspaces? Well, we just announced it's what just we, a, yeah. we it's always just like. Oh, no, you got to announce and then drop the price immediately. <laughs> yeah. That's got to have that mojo. Okay. We, well, we, all, we always like to pass on savings we can make to customers. But yesterday, so we just okay, announced. Okay, so our, we're going to hold you on it. We're expecting price drops. We're going to get that out of them. There'll be a price drop. Savings. I guarantee you there'll be a price drop and more in functionality. Number okay. forty-three. Okay. So we get that out of the way. Okay, but, yeah, but let's still talk innovation. Okay, that's the Amazon way about innovation. So you're getting it out. Okay, rolling it out. Okay, agile, all that blah 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 stuff, right? What about the benefits? When will customers start seeing benefits when they roll out workspace? What are the, the things that you've seen from your early data coming in on the preview release? As people start using workstations, what's the adoption curve look like? They're like, bang, it's up, and then is it, they fumble along, do they make a discovery, is there more tooling? What pattern have you seen emerge from your customer base on the uptake? So it's still relatively early, um, given that we just made workspaces broadly available today, but one of the things that we've heard that we're very happy about is if you compare the way customers used to have to do this, if you wanted to provision 10 virtual desktops, you had to deploy the physical infrastructure, uh, deploy the software that's going to manage those desktops before you could even provision one. The demonstration that we did this morning showed that you can go from a standing start to provisioning a desktop, the, the provisioning process taking about 20 minutes. So the ability for customers to experiment with the service and see how it fits in their environment is really, really simple. For them to integrate with their existing Active Directory, which for us is a, we hear from customers is a really big thing because users keep using the credentials they've already got and IT can keep using the management tools they have. That integration process itself is really simple. If you've got an Amazon, for customers who use an, an Amazon VPC, they can choose to have a, a, a hardware-based VPN connection mapped to their on-premises network. And then the actual integration process with our Active Directory is really simple. The workspaces that we launched this morning in 20 minutes, they joined that existing Active Directory. So it's very easy for a customer. I was in a meeting a, a, a few weeks ago with a customer who was interested. He had an iPad with him, and I provisioned him a sample workspace. And by the end of the meeting, he connected to it. And that's just something that people haven't been used to in the on-premises environment, where they had to build all of this stuff before they could even get started with the first workspace. So talk about the numbers of, during your limited release, you had what was, I think, reported 10,000? Yeah, um, that's what Andy said this morning. We had 10,000 10, people who signed up for the limited preview. And how long was that period for? So we announced that at, uh, at reInvent was when we first. Okay, so that's when you opened it up. Yeah. So since reInvent, 10,000 now full availability in the two regions. Okay, great. Just want to get the notes on that. Good, Jim. Yeah, so Paul, I want to ask you a question. So there's, from the outside looking in, there's like four big companies in Seattle. The Boeing has kind of moved out, right? There's Microsoft and Amazon and Starbucks, of course. I'm just curious, you were at Microsoft for a long time and Amazon is tremendous at this nonstop pace of innovation. If you can kind of speak to you know, how does that engine work? It must be an exciting place to work. What makes Amazon so different as an innovation company to just continue to roll? I couldn't keep track of all the things he talked about today in the keynote yeah. in terms of breadth and depth of, of innovation and just pace of constant uh, releases. I mean, one of, our, one of our leadership principles is that we are customer obsessed. And that is one of the greatest things about, for me, about being in, in the company. You, you can listen to anybody from Jeff Bezos who talks about innovating on behalf of the customer. And that's what we like to do. And whether it's working on a, a service like Workspaces where we've made the service available to all of our customers today, and already we're thinking about how we can listen to more customer feedback, add capabilities, and make it better. And it's things that we see um, through all of our services. I mean, last year, uh, we released 280 uh, new services and, and a combination of major features and services. And this is all driven by um, doing what customers ask us for. And there's nothing more rewarding to work on those kinds of services where we're, we're listening to customers and we're able to build stuff that can make a can make a difference to what's happening in their environment. Yeah, it's interesting. That, and that's why I asked, I was curious how much the, the workspace has changed since that release, because I know you guys are so fanatically focused to steal from Rackspace on the customer and customer feedback and integrating that back into product delivery cycle. Yeah, well I mean we've heard we like I say we've heard we've heard a lot of feedback from customers about what they like, like about workspaces. We've heard even more things they'd like workspaces to do, you know, different kinds of workspaces with different capabilities. We started out with um, we have four bundle offerings. 
those are the things that we're only going to listen to customers about and then iterate on as we go forward. So it's great and we love getting that kind of feedback that we can react to. So why is it so easy for Amazon to do all this great stuff and hard for everyone else? I mean, VDI has been kicked around the industry for a while. We see VMware trying to do some stuff there. So, I mean, you know, virtualization at the, at the edge has been a new, a new phenomenon. But it's just, it's always seemed to be that, the nut that no one can crack. <laughs> it's just, it's just every year is the year of VDI, it seems to me. I mean, oh, so what's, what's the deal there? Why is it, is it inertia, is it the legacy environment, is it the variables, is it the weather conditions? I mean, what's going on with that? <laughs> well, I think, for, I mean, for us, it's, I would say it's the same as Andy characterized it when he was talking this morning, that we built workspaces because this is what customers asked us to do. And we, we built it in a way that gives those customers what they want. They can provision those workspaces, which are virtual machines dedicated to those end users. And that's, I mean, it's the, it's the way we think about building things here. We start with the customer and work backwards with the services that, that we built. And in that sense, it's a, it's a simple strategy in listening to customers. What's the number one thing customers tell you right now about workspaces that you guys are beavering away on right now? The, well, the one thing they, they would want us to improve is really just adding adding more capabilities. I mean, they love the fact that they can, they love the fact that they can provision desktops very easily with a few clicks. They love the, the experience that users get when they're connecting to workspaces and the fact that they can use different devices. From a, an IT administrator point of view, they, they love the fact that these workspaces integrate with their existing infrastructure so they can they don't have to create another directory for users that they can administer them in the same way. So lots of different things depending on, I mean, we, we talk about customers with every imaginable use case and that's the thing we've learned from workspaces during the preview, that lots of different customers with different scenarios that were. You guys are transforming the marketplace. You're innovating at the same time you're still commoditizing and disrupting. It's a really kind of a rare combination to see that happen. We talked about that in our intro segment this morning. Uh, I got to ask you about transformation. Where is the, in your own personal opinion, not take your Amazon hat, employee hat off for a second, knowing what you know as an employee and product manager, put your industry hat on. What is the most transformative thing that you're seeing right now? Is it IT? Is it the business line? Is it the developers? What is the major transformation that's the key lever to all this massive sea change of innovation, this modern era we're living in? Workspace is one, you got Kinesis, you got Redshift, you got Elastic Beanstalk, DevOps, process improvement across the board. People are instrumenting their businesses differently. Like, it's just the cloud is changing so much. But I, and I think that would be the challenge to answer that question with a, a single word. I mean, if you look at those three, three of the services that we announced at reInvent that are now available to all customers, one was Workspaces, one was Amazon AppStream, one was Amazon Kinesis. And they're all doing really different things for customers but enabling new scenarios. So workspaces might be enabling a customer to um, deal with a seasonal demand for workspaces as well as more traditional desktops. AppStream, in the examples Andy gave this morning, we had um, EVE Online, which is a massively multiplayer online game where AppStream means instead of players abandoning the download of a game, they have a new way of, of interacting with this from uh, True Golf, the, the golf simulator that instead of having a smaller market where people have to spend a lot of money to have a golf simulator. So people can potentially do that in their own home. Those golfers can now compete in virtual tournaments or from the point of view of Disney where they were, um, you know, they've got an environment where for them training can now become something that you do instead of something that you go to with a classroom with all these expensive PCs. And then Kinesis doing totally different stuff. We talked to um, one of our customers in, in the UK called Snowplow Analytics and they're they're kind of going and, and building these solutions so it's much easier for people to make real-time decisions, which, you know, it's a phrase sounds general, but, you know, one example is that you know, these customers know that if you're browsing to do a test drive on a, on a car company website, they can predict that you're probably not going to, they kind of know that, they, their data would show you, the their data would have shown you that the next day they could have predicted that you were going to leave the website. So in the old world, they'd have to go and try and follow up with you or email or have a dealer call you. And now with, with something like Kinesis, they know that you're going to get off the website. So they'll do something to engage you before you get off the website, so you'll go for a test drive. Or in, a, in, the, in the line of a multiplayer game, they think you're going to quit, so they could do something like give you a you know, thousand credits or whatever it is. To, yeah. So it's all, and those, those three services are doing very, very different things, but enabling really interesting new scenarios. And people customers. can use them in different ways, how they mix and match is all driven by their needs. Yeah. Not so much some prefabricated 
syntax and you guys are projecting. Yeah. Here's absolutely. the services, stitch them together the way you want. Here is some building blocks, and we would love, you, you are limited by the imagination of our customers who can build these yeah. amazing I mean, I'm, I'm being a big believer of composite applications being built and using the building blocks. It's just the choice of the developer and the environment. So I got to ask you the question now, this is a mind, you are basically living, the, drinking the Kool-Aid around a whole new mind mindset. You're living in a whole new era, thinking differently, new use cases, uh, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, the developer can do whatever they want. What is the bottleneck on the folks that haven't accepted the change yet? Now there's process management change, people change management, people hate change, right? So, you know, you're on the, you're on the, the good side of change, you're making <laughs> things happen. So, what's your take? You talked about a lot of customer surprise, some of them say, hey, get out, I really want to, I don't want to talk to you. I know I heard you guys are kicking ass, but you know, we don't want to talk to you right now, we can't handle it. We can't handle the truth. <laughs> What, what, what's the key issue? What are these people, what's holding people back? Well, sometimes I think it can be a matter of explaining what, how the cloud can help them achieve things they couldn't have done before. And for, for, you know, for people who've spent a lot of time in, in an on-premises environment, and then they, when you look at, kind of, you look at generations of people, I mean, we've had customers in startups, and their kind of concept, I mean, there was one customer we had, I think, who said something like, um, I don't know the cost of a server any more than I know the cost of a sword, because it's not, it's, they haven't grown up in that environment. If you look at someone who's worked in an on-premises environment uh, for 20 years, they've been used to a different way of doing things. So sometimes it's just making sure they understand how these building blocks can go together. One very large customer I had, you their marketing department, they love the fact that they could build these elastic applications. Or they love the fact they can advertise. bypass <laughs> IT. They love they can <laughs> bypass IT. But then, but to be fair to that IT department, that IT department wanted to be able to surf and they weren't, in, they weren't intending to not do a good job. So it's yeah. trying to help the, yeah. they trying to help those ass. people move CYA. from what they were doing. Yeah. We love covering IT, we love IT. But, but you know, some IT guys are my friends. You know, it's cover your ass time. And sometimes compliance can be a killer too, right? I mean, these are issues. But um, so in summary, what did you just say? Process, people, what's the big uh, bottleneck that's holding companies back? I think the, I mean the, it, I think it all, I think it would, it, it would all depend on the company. I mean, that I think the, we are finding more and more customers who really understand how, how all these building blocks can come together. And it's not just, it's not just something for startups. It's not just something for enterprises. It's not just something for certain parts of one thing. And that's why we've always said we have hundreds of thousands of customers with every use case you could think of in. You know, every possible industry okay, so, you might think of. So here's the scuttlebutt that I hear about Amazon. We hear on the queue. Boy, Amazon's kicking some butt. They're just so ahead of the game. They do things differently. Yeah, you guys have earned that. You know, I've been following you guys since you started eight years ago. I'm here in San Francisco talking to startups, very humble beginning. Still kind of humble, but still just shipping code, shipping product. Yes, you, you guys are doing really well. How can you continue to keep going? What's the, what's the internal drive? What's the speech by Andy? What does he tell the troops? What do you tell your troops? I think, well, I mean, I think one, of, one of the things that we are all maniacally focused on at Amazon is, and it sounds in a way, could in a way sound like a cliche, but it isn't. And it, I think it's all the way the same from, from Jeff on down. It is focusing on building what customers want. Which sounds like it's such a simple thing, but that's, we didn't build workspaces because of any other reason the customer's saying. We would like, we, we see what you've done with, with EC2, and we'd love you to be able to do something like this, but can yeah. give us virtual desktops. But the, but the challenge there is, you know, pro, you're a product guy, so you know, you saw the customer slide, it's huge. Very diverse, good gov, you got all kinds of use. Your customer base is so diverse now, you can please, if you served all your customers, you could have five zillion versions of the product. So the question to you is, how do you stop from boiling the ocean? Is it a methodology, is it discipline, gut feel? You guys <laughs> scope this out, acid test? Throw dart at the board. I don't. I think it's. I certainly wouldn't describe it like that. I mean, again, it's. It goes back to working backwards from from what customers want and bringing things out and then iterating very rapidly. So it's not. It's not like a traditional model where you would you'd wait a long time and then bring this kind of monolithic thing out. We're starting today with workspaces with some capabilities that our customers tell us are very useful. And the only thing that we are going to do with that service is iterate on it and add more and more capabilities based on on what customers are taking us and it sounds like a very it sounds, sounds like a very simple scenario but it is it is the the beat that we march to in terms of what what our customers who are the most important people to us ask us to do yeah but on the other hand you guys are delivering to, it's, it's the classic steve jobs quote right where people don't know what they want i'm just going to give them what i think they want and you and you guys are delivering innovations now you're kind of into it so they're asking for stuff and 
you guys were delivering innovations way out in front of what really the customer demand was because you basically flipped the model in terms of of delivering it as a service. And I think we we kind of see two sides of it. I mean, for for workspaces for virtual desktops, this was a very clear. I mean, this was a very clear ask. From um, this is a very clear ask from customers, and the the point you, we have desktops here as we're having this conversation. People know what desktop computing is. Right. Virtual desktops have been this thing that's been coming for for a long time, and it's the way that it's been done that lets customers take advantage of it easily. But then, if you take another service like AppStream, we also learn from our customers. So as we built that service, we found scenarios that thought we thought might be useful, like Eve Online, the game I talked to you about. But then we're also seeing things that that you know the True Golf Golf Simulator is not a game. The way that um, the Eve Online application is, Disney doing the, the maintenance and the training they do. These are different kinds of scenarios that are that are only limited by the imagination of our customers and what they're telling us to do. And so that's the kind of thing that we will build into AppStream, yeah. or the you know, same kind of thing with Kinesis for real-time streaming of data. You know, we start with something where we feel that there, there is a need that, and maybe in some cases, it's an unmet need that we validate with customer input, and then we only continue to iterate. I'm doing the right thing based on what those customers say. And we, we, we learned since we announced Workspaces in, the, in November, some scenarios in traditional enterprises are exactly what we expected, but then we've also heard all of these others as well. And it's you know, it couldn't be more fun to come into work and have a stack of things to do on behalf of customers to make services better. That's great. And what's so, the what's the main way that you hear from customers? What's the main communication vehicle back up the food chain into the into the product development? I think it's every way that we can get feedback. I mean, here we are. Here we are as kind of an educational event where we're trying to meet with a lot of customers. I've spoken to quite a lot of customers today. We have people in the field who are evangelising. We have solutions architects who are in the field who are, who are talking. There's work we do in the community to hear from those customers. Messages that they might send us via social media. Surveys that we do with customers. I mean, every way that we can find. Every way that we can find to um, listen to customers. And you're listening. And I think that's the key. Is that yeah. you're listening? Yeah. yeah. It's great. Okay, we here live in San Francisco. We're here we're talking about workspaces. Final word I'll give you is what's next for workspaces? Tell us what's around the corner. Give us a little taste of what's coming. Well, we don't tend to tell. We, yeah, we don't come tend on. to tell people about <laughs> specific yeah. details. Okay, not, me, hold on, let me phrase the question. The I know you really can't talk amazing. about what's coming around next. So <laughs> give us a taste of what's coming around coming around the corner. Well, certainly the thing that we've told thing that, the, that we've, <laughs> we've told uh, customers today is so we announced workspaces. It's going to be in more. It's going to be in more regions soon, so that more people can yeah. uh, go and launch their first virtual desktop with a few clicks in the uh, management console. So, I mean, outside of the normal stuff, ease of use, blah, 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 just get it up and running, fully globally available, right? That's your number one. That's going to be, that's that's gonna be a priority to make sure that customers can, you know, we've always said this, go global in minutes. And yes, we want to make sure that customers can use workspaces on their terms in the, the location that makes sense to them. We're here, Paul Duff with Amazon Web Services Workspaces. Again, one of the hot products that was released at reInvent. Again, uh, Amazon moving the ball down the field, more releases, more stuff, more shipping code. Every time you uh, swing a cat, something ships out of uh, Amazon. You guys are doing a great job. So we're big fans, happy customers. Uh, we'll be right back with our next guest after the short break. This is theCUBE, live in San Francisco, covering Amazon Web Services Summit. Be right back. <laughs>